good afternoon. So I was looking at Twitter or X. I don't know what we're doing with that. But anyway, I guess X now for good. Uh, I was looking at, at Twitter and X and uh, I, uh, I saw this tweet. I wanted to share it with you. It says uh, it's from Jeff Winninger and it says they don't just hike to 5.5% and then the system collapses in the next trading session. It takes a while for the deflationary smack to occur. Insolvencies, late payments, people falling behind, it's a process. It will meet punishment. Here's an example, commodities. So he has this uh, tweet and he says that, you know, like, look, the Fed is raising rates, but things haven't happened yet to cause, you know, it cause issues. And so if you look here, you see these little, uh, these little knockdowns, basically, when the fund, FUD's fund rates goes up, the, uh, the knockdown occurs, okay? So that's his central thesis. So the idea that some are, are, are putting forth is that um, when you have these rate cuts and they were so, so, so fast and so rather severe um, that it's going to take a time for this to work itself through the economy. And so um, this follows with the Fed kind of um, recently saying, you know, we're going to, we're, we're going to pause for right now, but we're going to continue uh, to, to monitor the situation. We're not going to, we're not going to raise rates, but we, we're not taking that off the table. And so, you know, we're stuck in this situation where, at least in the real estate world where I live, um, you know, we've got high mortgage rates, okay? We've got very, very expensive properties, which is the result of inflation, in my opinion. And it's... It's, it's sticky. It's not going down. Raising the rates is not lowering the, uh, lowering the uh, asking price on homes or the sale price on homes. Um, and yet at the same time, there's very few buyers that can then buy as we continue to move towards 8% um, with mortgages. So my thing today is, is let's just say that he's correct, okay? Let's look at some advice or let's look at some um, articles that might uh, show uh, credence to what he's saying, or maybe there's things that disprove. So the first thing that I looked at was this CNN article. Now, you can rail on CNN. That's totally fine. I, I totally get it. But for the most part, their business stuff is still pretty decent. And so in this article, this was from um, July 26th of 2023. If you, if this was on one of the uh, raising of the rates uh, the Fed did. This is, it says, like you can see the headline, inflation is still the number one focus. The labor market remains robust and the importance of rate wage growth. But right in here is where I thought it was key. It says it could take at least a year for the effect of rate hikes to filter through the broader real economy, according to some research. And it's already been more than the, in a year that, since the Fed began lifting rates. So, yeah, so in theory, like, things should be happening in the economy, okay? And these things that should be happening should be related to um, things that use credit, right? Like, a lot of credit. And so if you look at, this is from the New York Fed. This is from um, the second quarter of 2023. Uh, this is the household debt and credit report, and it says simply that the household, uh, total household debt rose by $16 billion to reach $17.06 trillion in the second quarter of 2023, according to the latest quarterly report on household debt and credit. Credit card balances saw gr brisk growth, rising $45 billion to a series high of $1.03 trillion. Other balances, which included retail credit cards and other consumer loans and auto loans, increased by $15 billion and $20 billion, respectively. So one, one branch of thinking is, hey, credit card debt going up, more people putting credit on their credit cards. And that's not a great thing considering that the rates on credit cards are adjustable and they're moving up in tandem with the Fed rate increases. And that at some point in time, when the American consumer is tapped out, there'll be more and more delinquencies in this space. So that's, that's what people are kind of looking for. Sadly, they're looking for the misfortune of others. They're looking for these numbers to change. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting about this is um, you have uh, student loan balances falling by $35 billion, which is strange because those are due in October. It's hard to be paid this month. So 
that's a little odd. And then here we have an, an odd article here from Reuters saying that U.S. mortgage delinquencies fall to an all-time low. So you have, uh, in, just in the quotes, it's U.S. mortgage delinquencies fell to a record low in the second quarter due to a strong job market and low interest rates prevailing on most home loans despite a big jump in mortgage rates over the past two years, report on Thursday said. So let's just break that down a moment. It fell to a record low due to a strong job market, which the Fed has continually tried to soften, and the low interest rates prevailing on most home loans, which is the absolute reason why the housing market is stuck right now. In my opinion, it's stuck. Who is, again, who's going to sell their 3% when they have a 3% mortgage to move to a 7 or 8% mortgage and, and a more expensive home? It's, it's not likely. So delinquency rates fell to 3.37% at the end of the second quarter, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association's National Delinquency Service, their lowest since the MBA began collecting data in 1979 and down from 3.64% year on year. So, you know, that if we're, if we're seeing an increase in credit card debt, why are we not seeing an increase in uh, mortgage delinquencies? It's kind of a mystery. Seriously, delinquent loans, which are 90 days or more past due or in the process of foreclosure, fell to the lowest non-seasonally adjusted rate in 23 years at 1.61%. Think of that. Only 1.61% of all homes in the United States were under were, were in, facing seriously de- delinquency uh, in the second quarter. Economists are watching mortgage delinquency rates closely for signs of weakness amidst the Fed's reserve aggressive 525 basis point interest rate increase since March of 2022, which increased the cost of borrowing across the board. And so, yes, people are looking again. We should see more delinquencies. And let's just let's just talk for a moment about what the Fed is is trying to do. Okay, the Fed does not like inflation, but they don't like it as much as I despise it. I was on the Fed early on and said, you need to start raising rates. You don't have to raise them a ton, but just let's start raising this a little bit. You know, let's just get it up a little bit. You know, quarter point here, wait, wait, because we don't know the results and it could take a year or more. I mean, this is not new stuff if you're familiar with general economics. So they didn't do that, though, because, again, inflation was transitory, they said. All of them, all the experts. And um, that, I thought, was very, very dangerous. But what the Fed's trying to do is to try is trying to put the brakes on an overheated economy that they created by artificially low rates. And so what they want to see is something they would call softening of the employment sector, right? Softening. Softening means you get fired or laid off, okay? That's what they want. They don't like to see... Empl- they consider full employment between 4% unemployment to like, well, I'd say 3 to 4, 3 to 5%. And so uh, we've been running in that range now for, for a long time, and, it's, and it's, um, they want that number down. They just don't like that high, that high employment number. A, good, a, a strong employment number would indicate, like, would, would cause rising wage growth, we would get, we in theory would get wage growth, and that would be great um, for the people because then they could afford these houses that are very, very expensive, uh, pretty much not affordable, you know, on the, on the median. So we're not seeing the, the softened employment. Well, what would we, what are we seeing, right? What are we seeing? Well, they say commodities have collapsed, but um, I know, I know oddly enough that orange juice is on a record run, and live cattle also on a record run on commodities. Um, gasoline has been low, but I feel like it's going to come back. I feel like it's coming back, so that's that's not really doing anything. So credit card debt, credit card debt being um, higher, okay, not good, which would lend to this idea that people are stretched and can't afford basic things, so they're putting it on their credit card, which is very dangerous to do with the rates... Um, on your credit card are, are adjustable and they're moving to the higher end uh, due to the Fed increase in, in their borrowing rate. So, um, but we're not seeing that. What else would we see? We should see auto loan defaults. Now, anecdotally, we're seeing lenders move out of that space. Big national lenders move out of that space. Um, is that is that 
like we're looking for these things to happen and have enough of them happen so that we can have some sort of narrative that says, yes, the economy is cooling off. Uh, delinquencies in the uh, in, in uh, mortgages, you would think would follow delinquencies with autos, credit card debt. But you're not seeing many. You're not seeing as uh, the delinquencies in the credit card debt either. All this is to say that this situation that we find ourselves in as real estate agents uh, is not great because we still we're going to see high mortgages, which affects the affordability. Even if supply did come to the market, you're still so high on your prices and the mortgages, people are still uh, uh, reticent to want to go forward with purchasing a home. And it's so strange. I've never, I've never encountered this before, so I don't want you to think that, um, that this is normal. I've been doing this for quite some time. Um, but, but we're kind of stuck. I just wanted to bring it to your attention that if you, if you yourself are at home and you're like, you know, what should I be keying off of? Well, you should start looking at things like delinquencies for mortgages. Now, look, as the prices go up, you get more equity in your home, okay? So so this is, I mean, the, the amount of, oh gosh, our home prices are up 40% in four years. I mean, so that's going to cover up a lot of bad situations because basically you're living there and the home goes up in value and you haven't done anything to it. So... Um, there's that, but you should be looking. If that employment number goes south or if the credit card delinquencies go higher, then you can see the effects of the Fed not necessarily fixing inflation. That's just the start. And to the original tweet, it does take a significant amount of time as the Fed tightens before you start to see it in the numbers, and we're just not at that point yet. So this is August of 2023. Let's let's revisit this in December and see what the situation is uh, going into the new year. With that, I'm going to head on out. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and I will catch you on the next one.